Good evening, Titans. This is Mr. Simpson, and we're moving on to section 8.2, graphing quadratic functions in the form of a times x squared plus c. The objective is to graph quadratic functions of that form and to solve real-life problems involving quadratic functions in that form as well. So our essential question is, how does the value of c affect the graph? Now, the new vocabulary term for this section is a zero of a function. And the zero of a function is the value of x that makes the function f of x equal zero. So a zero of a function is an x-intercept of the graph of the function. So if we have the coordinate plane here and we have a parabola, then the zeros would be that point and that point, the points where it crosses the x-axis. So first of all, the core concept is graphing f of x equals a times x squared plus c. Now we've already talked about how the value of a affects the graph. And so what we're showing you now is if we have a plus c at the end, then it's going to shift the graph up. Okay, That's a vertical shift up, as you can see by the green graph. Now, if the c is being subtracted or is a negative as you can see here so if we had f of x was equal to 2x squared minus 5 well this minus 5 would make it go down and so if we wrote it as plus a negative 5 then the c would be less than 0 and that would mean that the graph would be shifted down 5 units okay so again the vertex of a graph in the form f of x equals a times x squared plus c is just the value 0 comma c because we haven't shifted the graph left or right so the vertex still has the x coordinate of 0 but the y coordinate would now would be c so if we're going to graph this again we're going to compare it to the graph of y equals x squared which remember y equals x squared just goes right through the origin 0 0 okay so in this case we're going to plug in 0 for x so 0 squared is 0 and then 0 minus 2 would be a negative 2 then 1 squared is 1 and 1 minus 2 would be a negative 1 2 squared is 4 and then 4 minus 2 is 2 and 3 squared is 9 and 9 minus 2 is 7 so now my ordered pairs are 0 comma negative 2 we have 1 comma negative 1 we have 2 comma 2 and we have 3 comma 7. So if we graph these, my ordered pairs, I have 0, negative 2, I have 1, negative 1, I have 2, comma 2, and I have 3, 7. Okay, and then just as we did last night, again the points are symmetric. So here's my line of symmetry. So I have a point over here, a point that matches up right over here, and then the other point that matches up here. So now I have my graph. Okay, again, so we're using the table of values to find the ordered pairs. Again, I like to pick obviously the point that will give me the vertex, and then I pick two or three points to the right, and then I use that the line of symmetry and I pick then the two or three points that correspond to those points on the line of symmetry. So again, just a few more examples here. So if we graph g of x here of x squared minus 5, again I plug 0 in for x, I get 0 squared, 0 squared minus 5 is a negative 5. 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 5 is a negative 4. 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 5 is a negative 1. 3 squared is 9, and 9 minus 5 is 4. So again, my ordered pairs are 0, comma, negative 5, 1, comma, negative 4, 2, comma, negative 1, and then 3, comma, 4. Again, I wish my graphs were a little bigger here, but again, 0, negative 5, then I have 1, negative 4, then I have 2, negative 1, and I have 3, comma, 4. And then again, I pick the points that are symmetric to them on the other side, and I make my graph. 
Again, notice how the minus 5 shifts my graph down 5 units. Okay, shifts it down 5 units. This one would just shift the graph 3 units. So again, I could just go to 0, 3, and then I know it's that same shape. So over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 3, up 9, and get my graph the same way. Okay. Again, plus 3 just moves the graph up 3 units.